Okay. <sighs> okay. I know I've been gone from YouTube for months since January. I posted my last video in January and I've been gone for a long time. That's because I haven't been in the headspace. But something has happened recently um, that really disturbs me because I'm a teacher. This thing that has happened disturbs me on so many levels. What I'm talking about is the Daddy of Five um, YouTube channel and that whole abuse scandal thing. I'm not saying that there is abuse, but what I want to do is explain how it can be perceived and how it may have been reported to authorities as abuse. Because that's part of my job, is to look out for these warning signs. As a teacher, I have a duty of care. I have a mandatory reporting responsibility, which means that if I suspect child abuse, whether or not I teach the child or not, if I suspect child abuse of, the, of my next door neighbours, of the people who live across the street, of just someone in the supermarket, I have a legal obligation to report it. So what's seen in those videos is disturbing and to me, someone who has been taught and has studied the signs of child abuse, physical, psychological, even sexual um, abuse, just seeing the things that have happened in these videos fires so many red flags for me. As a teacher, I'm seeing so many classic hallmarks of child abuse and the reactions to child abuse and the way kids respond to child abuse. But the main thing for me is I want to explain where they are, why people are making that accusation. is because in the world of mandatory reporting, you are better off making a report and being wrong than not making a report and being right. In Victoria, where I live and where I am where I am registered, I am a registered teacher, I have a card. Not that that proves anything, but I am registered as a teacher. So in Victoria, so if I form a belief on reasonable grounds that a child is not safe, that they are being neglected, that they have been um, physically, um, emotionally, or sexually abused, I have to report it. And recently, and I mean recently, as in the last couple of years, they have, um, the Australian government has introduced two new criminal offences that directly, that can directly affect me. And that is failure to protect and failure to disclose. Now, these two offences, I will say they do only pertain to sexual abuse. Those two things carry a three to five year maximum penalty, like, jail time. So if I suspected a child was being sexually abused and I didn't report it and they, and it was found out through their investigation that I thought it and didn't report it, I could get sent to prison. The only way out is if you feared for your own safety by reporting. And in Australia, as far as I know, all reports are anonymous. You, your identity will not be disclosed. So I, I will go on to say that in Australia, we are very lucky that making a report that turns out to be incorrect. You cannot be sued civilly. You cannot be charged criminally. So long as you do so in good faith. So whether or not these videos are fake, whether or not it's staged is irrelevant here. The fact that there's a possibility that it could be real. And that's the part that scares me is the fact that it could be real. And if and what always went through my head when I was studying is like, what if I think a child is being neglected or abused? I had a situational placement where there was a child who was clearly being neglected and I, I didn't have a duty of care at that point, I was just a pre-service teacher. I don't have a duty of care and I had found out that the school had made multiple reports to DHS, which is the Department of Human Services, which is who we make those, compl um, those reports to. It's hard, it's difficult, and very hard to prove child abuse. It is very difficult to prove because more often than not there are no witnesses. This is a very special case where you have actual video evidence. Whether or not the videos are real or fake are for the authorities to determine. That's for the police. That's their job. Our job as a Good Samaritan is to alert the potential that this may be um, a situation where the kids are not being protected, where the kids are not safe. Really, really disturbs me to, to hear these parents 
say that Philip DeFranco ruined their family, that it's Philip DeFranco's fault. All of this got blown out of proportions. I'm sorry, no, it's your fault for putting that content out there that can be misconstrued as child abuse. You should never have put anything out that could have been possibly misconstrued as child abuse. Because the reactions of those kids, especially Cody, that the reactions of those kids, I'm sorry, but kids don't react like that. Kids can't fake that, I'm sorry. From what I've seen, kids can't fake that. I know kids, I work with kids. Kids don't fake cry like that, ever. It's important to understand that teachers is in our best interest to make a report. It's better off to make that report, have it investigated and have it be incorrect than, make, than not make a report, have it be true. I'm gonna leave it there. Let me know if you wanna hear more of my thoughts on this because this is just a very spur of the moment, off the cuff, not planned video. So let me know if you wanna hear more about stuff. If you want to know more about mandatory reporting in Australia or just mandatory reporting in general, let me know downstairs in the comments. I really hate that I had to make a video about child abuse. Every day I work, I work with children. I just spent the last two weeks working with children. It's what I live for, it's what I do. And seeing kids being harmed, being hurt, hurts me even though I don't know these kids and there is literally nothing that I can do to um, help them because they aren't Australian. So I can't make a report, but you can bet if they were Australian, if I found out that this was a family in Victoria, I would be making a report to DHS. Okay, I'm Little Dreamer 3. You guys can call me Laura and until next time, don't stop thinking differently. Bye.